Hey guys, how's it going? Matt McNeil coming to you from the garage. Uh, working on a Amy. That's my, my reference. She's kind of hiding behind this uh, dress over here. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, I got her sitting there so that I can match paint jobs, which is what I'm doing with number six, seven, eight, nine, and the one that's currently being painted, number 10. You see number two over there. This one's number five, which is my copy. So, uh, yeah, we are rocking and rolling in here at the moment. And I thought that it might be interesting to come in and talk about painting and how I'm approaching. Yeah, as you can see, this is exactly how I'm approaching painting these things. Getting it all over my hands. Um, but maybe talk a little bit about sort of spatter painting so that you can see... Um, kind of what this process looks like, or at least how I do it. If anybody does it differently than what I'm doing, please chime in, let me know. I'm always interested in learning newer and better ways of doing things. Sorry about that. Just trying to get my camera straight. Um, this light I'm using in here right now is a little bit blue, uh, so it's not quite the same color as what I'm seeing in the room. But uh, what I wanted to show you sort of is... Whenever you're doing this, I feel like there's a little bit of a, a need to be able to look into the future, um, because as you go, um, you're going you're gonna to see this, and you're going to be like, oh my God, look at this horrible mess I've made. It's speckly, and it's going to be terrible. But the reality is it won't be, <laughs> because any good paint job is going to have layers and layers of colors. And so... Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking this sort of yellowish red because Amy is not an unattractive vampire. So we don't want to really use purplish red so much. We want to make her a little glowy. We want her to make her attractive but terrifying at the same time. And so what I'm doing now is I am actually doing her, her skin tones that will be underneath the makeup job that Amy has. So uh, it's an important step because, um, you know, a human being is going to have um, speckles and freckles and all of this stuff underneath their skin tone. And I don't know if you can tell, but like even my hand looks a little purple underneath this light. Let me cut this off for a second. Uh, maybe we can get a better idea of what it is that we're looking at because this is kind of a really bad example. Hold on. Um, Okay, maybe. Uh, it's still hard to tell, but uh, bottom line is that this paint job that I'm doing right now is going to basically be buried a little bit underneath other layers of color. And in person, these speckles aren't nearly as significant as they look here. This is the third sort of paint pass that I've done on this particular blank. Uh, I based it out. Um, and, and an interesting note is the base that I'm using on Amy is the exact same base that I used on my bright boy, evil quist, my, uh, evil Ed, my Michael. And now I'm using it on her because it's a really great sort of neutral color that I found at Sherwin Williams. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, 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 I paint a good base on all of my blanks. Then I go in with a um, sort of a brighter reddish, yellowish, I don't want to say use the word orange, but wash. Because again, I don't want to darken her down. I don't want her to be, um, you know, like if we were doing a Freddy or a Jason or something like that, I think that we would want a darker wash. Uh, definitely when I did Evil Ed, I was doing a darker wash. Even Michael, I was using like a burgundy wash and a black wash. But for this, I don't want to make her too dark. So I'm not doing that. I'm doing a little bit of a brighter wash on her. Uh, and then I'm now coming in with this color here. Hard to see, but you saw it in the cup a minute ago. Um, and uh, literally, I am now... Uh, breaking up, let's see, maybe, maybe we can see here. That's a fair indication. Again, this video, this blue, this blue light I'm using is not the best for, um, but you can get a sense of sort of how base neutral this skin tone is, um, which allows me to come back in now with my sort of speckle pass, right? And, um, come in with my speckle pass and break up this sort of neutral, 
um, color. And so what I do is I take my brush, you can see, and I speckle it all over. And you go, might go, oh no, look how big those dots are. Okay, well we could come in here, we can blot it out just a little bit. But you don't want it all to go away. Any little bit of residue that's left on the, the surface is gonna help you break it up a little bit. And you know, again, skin that doesn't have makeup on it is got variation and that's what we're looking for here. We wanna break it up. And this is just some cheapo Michaels brush that I got. Uh, the other thing to kind of know is I still have base left. If for some reason I go too hard with the speckle, I can take my airbrush and do like a light uh, uh, pass on top of it and bury it a little bit. And to be honest, that might be the smart way to go anyway, because, you know, the idea here is that we're... Um, creating layers of color. Now, again, the video is, boy, it's really making this pop in terms of how bright this is. But the other thing you have to know is this is so super watery that once it dries, um, it's going to be hard to see. And that's kind of what you want. You want it just to kind of blend in so that what we're doing here is we're burying uh, layers of color. Um, and the other thing to know, I don't know if you can see it now, but uh, now that my brush isn't particularly wet, this is this is the money right here because it's it's just breaking it up enough and now i'm not having to blot the color away can you can you see it even going on maybe not but the effect is going to be super super cool because um i'm not dealing with the uh the hard edges and the uh the the the, the bigger dots and, and and again i think that that's kind of you, you want to not avoid the bigger dots but the more sort of overlapping color that you can get, um, the better. And uh, again, you know, worst case scenario is if I find that this is just a little bit too much, a little too hard uh, in regard to color. Like as you can see here, I got a, a dot of color here that I did earlier before I started the video. Uh, luckily it's still wet. Um, that you can just either blot it away or uh, when we come back through here, we'll, um, take a, another pass with a color. Now, you, you can sort of see as we back away from the, uh, the blank here that all of those dots just kind of go away, right? But it gives us a nicer, sort of softer breakup because if, if we just painted this with a base and then put the makeup on her or whatever, she would look very monochromatic, two-dimensional. There would be no warmth or depth to the paint job. And uh, layers of paint is where you're going to get that. And, the, you're, you know, you're going to want to work with, or maybe you don't, but I like to work with uh, thinner, thinner washes. And I like to come in and be able to kind of control that stuff. So, again, I start with a neutral base. And now I'm doing what I call the red pass. And so what I'll do is I'll do a, a nice speckle breakup on everything. And then I'll take my airbrush and I'll come in and do a little detail stuff with this color. And uh, that's where I'll get the creases around the nose, sort of these nasolabial folds. Um, I'll definitely paint the insides of the inside of the mouth, inside of the lips here, uh, up inside the nose a little bit, very very lightly. I'll tint this here. I'll tint this here. I'll come in and get the temples and underneath the cheekbones, and I'll just do a red pass. And maybe at that point she will be way too red, right? Uh, it's not, in fact, the case, because I'll show you here. This is a, uh, an Amy that's had a red pass. Actually, on video, it looks really red because of this blue light. But, um, but you can sort of see where I've gone in and kicked up a little bit of red here and there. But what you can always do, and what I always do, is after my red pass, I do a yellow pass. And uh, strategically add yellow, uh, particularly in the forehead area, covering into sort of here and here and maybe a little bit on the the chin. And then I'll definitely get the neck area, break all this up with a very, very, very thin sort of bronze yellow pass. And uh, in some cases, I'll come back um, and I'll do a, a very, very, very subtle light blue speckle in certain areas just to kind of if, if at that point everything feels too warm, I can cool it down with, with the blue. Um, and it's really, really kind of interesting to watch a paint job that immediately looks too red just by doing a very subtle, like very thin blue sort of 
um, speckle pass, you'll end up kind of cooling that paint job down. So you can start with something neutral. You can make it way too warm. Then you can skew it a little bit orange and then you can bring it back with the blues. So, you know, that's, that's definitely, uh, something that I'll keep my eye on, on these, these ladies. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to need the blue pass because, um, if you look at any of the reference photos of Amy, she's actually very orange, uh, particularly in this area and up and around and then up here and then around here and then back in here. She's, she's very orange. Um, and I, I don't want to cool it off too much, but what I will do is once I have a nice sort of kind of like broken up skin, uh, look, I'll come back in with an airbrush with, um, uh, a little bit of nightshades, uh, creeping flesh. I really actually like this stuff. This stuff's really great. No, no offense to monster makers, but I haven't had much luck with their airbrush paint, but this, uh, motion picture effects nightshades is uh, killer. I really kind of dig it. And, uh, what it will do is it's a cooler version of kind of the, the base coat that I'm using anyway, but I'll use that almost, uh, as if, uh, Amanda Beers has put on her foundation and I'll use that as a makeup on top of my skin tones and then I'll finish out that makeup job by doing that sort of uh, shimmery uh, bluish white around the eyes and then uh, come in and do the detail work with the um, eyeshadow and, uh, uh, and eyeliner stuff. So, and, and obviously lipstick and teeth and all of the other things it takes to get one of these things uh, done, eyelashes, uh, all of the other sort of finishing uh, aspects of this. But anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about speckle painting. Um, you can sort of see how this is, um, this is dry. And to be honest, this to me looks really, really great. Uh, it's gonna need uh, just a little more work on there, maybe a, a, like say a yellow pass. This too is a nice little breakup area. But um, uh, again, the other thing is to know that this camera on this iPhone is uh, skewing everything a little bit blue right now. So, um, but uh, yeah, to, when you're doing a paint job like this, you're gonna wanna be able to look a little bit into the future and know what it is that this is gonna end up looking like because again, layers of paint are gonna give you a really nice breakup on an otherwise monotonous base coat. Uh, and you wanna break all of that up so that um, it just softens the look of the thing. You know, It just gives us a more natural skin and in some cases, uh, a depth that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten just with a latex skin uh, with a base coat on it. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm up to tonight. Um, working on uh, six through 10 painting these Amy's. Um, very soon I'm gonna get number two out of here. Number five, like I say, staying in house because that's what I'm using as my reference. Um, oh, here's an interesting question. Those of you out there that are doing, um, you know, sort of runs of masks, limited runs, do you consider your copy among the number of limited copies that you're making? Uh, I only ask because on Evil Ed and Michael, you know, those were 20 mask runs, uh, which sold out. But one of those masks is the one that's sitting on my shelf that will never, ever, 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 ever see anybody else's collection just because I'm going to keep it. And, uh, um, you know, I'm a collector too. So, uh, but so I guess my big question is, do, does your copy count? Uh, or have I really only made 19 Michaels and 19 Eds? Um, anyway, something to think about. But uh, yeah, so anyway, here you go. Um, Mid-process, again, this is how sausage is made. Uh, if you have a different way of doing it, please tell me in the comments below. I'm using this Michaels brush. This has been my favorite brush ever since I started with the Evil Eds. Uh, as you can see, it's getting quite worn out. Um, and, and I've tried to replace it with other Michaels brushes and I just can't. So I know that some of you cut bristles off and do stuff like that in order to make, um, make your spatter patterns uh, specific, either small or fat or whatever. If you have any uh, guidance there, I'm sure anybody in that uh, will either watch this video or is reading comments would love to know what your process is as well. So anyway, there you go. I'm gonna get back to it. Uh, the, again, this is just the red pass that will be followed up with a yellow pass, maybe a blue pass, definitely a makeup session. And, um, you know, obviously we'll get the wigs on these gals. Uh, that's the other thing. I've got all five of these six through 10 wigs done. So uh, that's awesome. I have a couple of extra sets of four seal eyes. So once these girls get painted, uh, I still need to paint teeth. 
but uh, we are on the fast track. So if you are in numbers six through 10, no, it won't be very, very long because I'm, I'm ahead of the game here. So uh, yeah, so and that also means that uh, 11 through 15 and 16 through 20, you guys are... Uh, you guys are up very, very soon. So we are making progress, and uh, I appreciate everybody that uh, has showed interest in Amy. And just so you know, uh, the limited run of 20, um, uh, the initial run of 20 Amy's, uh, it, they were all sold. Uh, I do have some blanks that I will sell, and uh, I've told everybody that's bought one that I kind of wanted to reserve the right to do uh, 20 through 20 or 21 through 25. Uh, but I don't think I'll do those immediately because um, I got some clay to push around. It's, a, it's about time for me to get sculpting again. So uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, hopefully somebody found this informative. Hope everybody's having a good night. And uh, I'm going to get back to painting. And uh, again, thanks everybody. Um, let me know what you think. Comments below. Talk to you later.